little while ago I posted this on Instagram and got a couple of reactions so I thought I would take this video and talk to you about the mononormative bias. So the background for the story, I don't think we have to go into the details. It's well known, it happens every other day by the looks of it, where a celebrity is secretly photographed making out with another consenting adult who is not their spouse. We all love a bit of gossip, especially when we get this little comparison high, when we realize that the people whose lives we've so admired, uh, they're also messed up because everybody is messed up and that's normal and that's okay. For me, that just means we're increasing our humanity and we're understanding that everybody is human, but other people really use this information with the intent to hurt and with the intent to incite kind of outrage. And I think that's what these scandalous headlines are trying to do. So what's a mononormative bias? Basically, a bias is a preconceived notion that you have about something. It's kind of like a prejudice, which inf it's something that you just have and it informs an attitude that you developed uh, in favor or against something. For example, Thai food, good, Brussels sprouts, bad. Right? It's something whether you like it or not, you don't know where the bias is coming from, it's just in you and it informs the decisions you make and the value judgments you make about things. So this, our brain likes biases because they're energy efficient, they're quick, and the problem arises when we lump things together that don't really belong together and then we make kind of false assumptions and um, trip ourselves up. For example, people who eat Thai food, good. People who eat Brussels sprouts, bad. You see where I'm going with this. So you've probably heard about the heteronormative bias, which is the assumption in society that a person is heterosexual. That's the normal, natural sexual orientation. In the binary, that means a man is sexually attracted to a woman and a woman is sexually attracted to a man. And that just is assumed. Society evolved that way, cultural values reinforce it, that's what we see represented in the media overwhelmingly. So the automatic assumption or the bias is that everyone you meet in the street is probably heterosexual and those who aren't are deemed different and bad in that paradigm. So the mononormative bias along similar lines, assumes that the natural, universal, normal relationship status is monogamy. So a dyad, a couple, a relationship, usually a marriage, between a man and a woman. That's because those two people can make babies. Historically, marriage has been great for making family alliances and keeping properties and family lines, but you probably know that marriage didn't used to be for love. That's a more recent phenomenon that came about with the Romanticism movement about 150, 200 years ago. So monogamy served a purpose for a while. The approach to monogamy has changed over time. It used to be a super monogamy where you would have one partner for life. And now we live in times that are more serial monogamy, where it's if your relationship ends, you can get divorced and you can start dating the next guy, but you're supposed to have one romantic partner at a time. Closely associated with this mononormative bias is the sex negative bias, where again, based on patriarchal um, cultural views, only sex and intimacy that can lead to making a baby is deemed acceptable and everything else is deviant or bad. So sex for pleasure, as is often the case nowadays in relationships with people who are not married and even with people who are married, is technically, we've been going against the norm. So we've been conditioned to have a lot of hangups around sex that is for pleasure and not for procreation. At this point, I want to say I'm only touching the very surface of this with a very broad brush. If you want more details, I recommend you follow Alok V. Menon on Instagram. I hope I'm saying their name right, because they, uh, they publish a lot of book reviews on a lot of literature that goes a into a lot more detail. So to recap, the automatic assumption in today's society is that any person you would meet on the street is heterosexual and monogamous. People still freak out at same-sex relationships and many, many more people freak out when they hear about a couple adding extra intimate partners to their dyad. And the views or the, the attitudes have changed and relaxed a little bit over the last 20 years, but there is still a long way to go. So the mononormative bias 
dictates that the ideal relationship is between a man and a woman. You can have as many friends as you like, but you're only supposed to have one romantic or intimate partner. It, uh, this is based on the enduring but scientifically completely unproven principle of the soulmate, right? This romantic notion, this romantic idea that you have the one, you have to find the one for you or you have to be the one for someone else and then you live happily ever after. So because this idea of a soulmate is an ideal and not reality, it needs a lot of scaffolding to hold it up. And that's why you get rules like forsake all others and till death do us part. These are intended to solidify the commitment. And many marriages end because that sexual exclusivity clause is broken. If you're having a strong reaction to that right now, hear me out. We're not quite done yet. Of course, it's a betrayal when somebody you love and you're loyal to cheats on you. Of course, it hurts. Of course, it feels awful when somebody you trust goes behind your back, especially when you're sitting at home trying so hard not to flirt with a barista or whatever it is, and they're just letting the side down and doing whatever they want. Terrible. Absolutely. Yes. Get those feelings out. Be outraged. Being cheated on sucks, and this is not a video about the joys of cheating. But now can we take a step back and consider whether this romantic expectation of lifelong monogamous fidelity was realistic to expect in the first place? Or is this something we go along because that's what everybody does? That's what we know. That's the messages that we've been getting. That's what it says in your holy book. That's what the law encourages. That's what we see represented positively on the TV and movies and in novels, because that's what the bias is. Your holy book, by the way, was written probably by men many thousands of years ago in a very different context at very different times. The law, marriage law, um, even today, a marriage is the only relationship configuration that enjoys legal protections at a federal level. As a married person, you have access to over a thousand more rights than a single or a widowed or a divorced person, even though some research suggests that only 20% of uh, US adults are actually living in this supposedly universal heterosexual monogamous marriage right now. And of those marriages, we know that 50% end in divorce. And other research suggests that four to five percent of uh, the population actually currently is in a consensually non-monogamous relationship configuration and 21 percent of U.S. Americans have been at some point. So that is the population of Maine and half of Vermont combined that are disadvantaged by marriage laws, for example. I'm not here to talk you out of monogamy. You have to do whatever feels right for you. I'm just saying that if you find yourself having a strong reaction to the news that complete strangers are having consensual sex outside of their marriage, maybe there is an unconscious bias at work. Yes, cheating is the worst way to go about exploring the different kinds of intimacy for you. But because talking to your partner about opening the relationship is so taboo, many people feel like doing it in secret is their only option. I'm not forgetting that these biases are completely natural. We've all grown up with these messages, but because they are hurting a growing number of people, a growing number of the population who is actually um, pursuing consensual non-monogamous relationships, it might be time to revisit the bias because the, the stigma that it creates actually hurts a lot of people. Let me know your thoughts in the comments.